and its ecosystem sponsors. And now your host, Dave Vellante. We're back, this is theCUBE, and we're live from Moscone Center. We're in Moscone North this year. This is our sixth year doing VMworld. And you know, everybody's talking, David Flora and I have been, been here all week, everybody's talking about this is a storage show. It's really been largely a storage show. Other, certainly plenty of other things going on, but it's really our pleasure to have Nelson Nahum here. He's the CEO of Zadara Storage. And Nelson, I have to say, personally, first of all, thanks for coming on theCUBE. No, thank you, know, you. You were one of the early, early contributors to the Wikibon community. Sure, you yeah. published some great stuff, yeah. you know, back when you know, it was just a, an idea in the back and, uh, of a napkin. Yeah. So we really appreciate all the yeah. support and contributions you've yeah, made over the great. years. And, yeah. and then, you, of course, you're really busy now building a building yet another company. <laughs> so congratulations on all the success and the traction that you're having. So, you know, again, welcome and uh, give us the update on, on Zadara and what's going on here so, at, at yeah. VMworld. Thank you, thank you for having me. Um, no, we, we are busy working, uh, getting customer traction, uh, head down yeah. uh, with customer traction. Uh, we are quite unique in our offering. Uh, we offer a storage as a service. Um, with the same quality and security and performance of enterprise storage arrays, but with the flexibility of the cloud uh, and, and the economics of the cloud. You pay only for what you use, you need uh, to create a specific storage, you go to the console and after a minute it's up and running, you, you new array. <laughs> um, so, and, and we do this on premises as well in, in public cloud, so this is, uh, uh, keeping us very busy because we are uh, we have a very unique offering. Uh, actually, you, you mentioned that this is a storage show, and there are many storage products. In the whole floor, we are the only one as a service. Uh, so that's an uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, point. you know, this is this is a very interesting. I, I met a gentleman on the cube about a year ago. Alan Nance was his name. He's uh, the, essentially the infrastructure CIO at Philips, mm -hmm. and he said, "We will not consume any IT." unless it's a service. Yeah. This is a mandate from our CEO mm -hmm. because he estimated that 85% of their IT spend was non-differentiated. So yeah. the mandate came down from high, and now at that time, I got on my high horse, I got on my high horse, I started publishing, but yeah. it's interesting to note that the industry in general has not responded. So you see, saw an opportunity. Maybe yeah. talk about that a little it, bit. It, it, it is a great opportunity. As, as, as you say, there are many people that recognize that. It's uh, not only that uh, you have zero capex. <laughs> First of all, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. You, you, you have the money, you invest in your business instead of investing in, in storage boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, it also reduces your opex because we manage the storage for the customer. We're in charge of the hardware infrastructure, firmware upgrades. Uh, if we need to retire equipment, we retire equipment and do the migration on the fly. This is a cloud system. Uh, so all this operations that require a lot of OPEX and a lot of time and a lot of people are completely gone. So zero capex, reduction of OPEX. And the last thing that um, is not pretty obvious, and, and actually I discovered this during the um, Zadara, <laughs> is that um, the state of mind of the company is completely different when you sell a storage box for, let's say, $200,000. Uh, and if the customer after a few months is not very happy, you still sleep well, you, you, you sold the $200,000 box, and maybe after three years you will not get the refresh. Yeah. But you our, got your bonus. <laughs> you get the bonus, exactly. In our business, we need to win the customer every day. Uh, in our business, a customer can go to the console and simply delete the entire storage in one minute. I'm done with you. I'm That's done with you. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is uh, another, First of all, make our company very, very customer oriented, I would say customer obsessive. I mean, I, I, I always believe in, in customer support, but when you <laughs> depend on the customer every day, uh, it, it is uh, really important. And, and at the end of the day, it forms with the customer a partnership. Basically, they understand that uh, if, if we are doing well, they are doing well. If, if they are not doing well, we are not doing well. Uh, and it, uh, it is a better bonding with the customer than to be a partner instead of a So customer. I come up to your booth at, at VMworld and you know, I ask you, okay, what do you do? You tell me we do cloud storage, storage as a service, and then I mean, imagine you get a lot of these questions because, you know, small company, not everybody knows who you are. So 
Okay, they say, how does it work? You know, what yeah. do, do I have to install hardware? Or yeah. what, what do I do? Okay. Yeah, so uh, we, uh, our secret sauce, uh, we are software developers. Uh, so we developed a software that run on standard x86 servers uh, that form a cloud storage solution that is very scalable. And the main technology and the main patent actually that we have is that the, uh, it is a multi-tenant storage, but the, we do a very good job of separating the tenants. So every tenant has their own drives, their own networking, their own uh, compute, their own management of the storage. Um, and especially for enterprises, for, for example, in, in a multi-tenant system, you have, let's say, two companies. One need to be connected to their own network and active directory, the other to the, their own uh, network. And they need to be isolated. You cannot connect the networks of two companies together. So this is the kind of thing that we do that is completely unique. And, and the customer feel that he has a storage array, like many of these storage that are um, here ex exposing with all the snapshots and replication and enterprise capabilities. But actually, because it's multi-tenant, uh, they can go to the console and, and create on the fly a, a storage array. And um, just to finish your question, we deliver uh, hardware and software uh, all together uh, at the customer data center or into multi-tenant data centers like Equinix and, and others, um, and the uh, customer pay per use. So mm. the customer don't need to buy the hardware, don't need to buy the software, you don't need to integrate anything. Uh, we ship everything together and, and they just use the storage. Mm. So, so what are some of the uh, <coughs> major use cases that you're seeing and how, how does your service changing the way that the customer views storage, uses storage? Yeah. Can you talk about uh, what's different from that point of view? Right, uh, so uh, again, the, the, from the technology standpoint, one of the main capabilities we have is the multi-tenancy and the separation between tenants. And because of that, anybody that has some kind of different tenants or, or workloads or departments, it, 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 it fits very well. Nobody else is, is doing this kind of thing. So service provider, cloud providers, uh, data center providers that by nature they, they have multiple tenants in their own data centers, uh, we fit perfectly well. Uh, we have a customer, uh, Telecity, that is a big data center in Europe. Uh, they are really good in, in multi-tenancy and they have banks and uh, financial institutions in, in their own uh, data centers, they need to provide storage as a service with the complete security for the, the customer. Uh, software as a service companies, they are also kind of multi-tenant, right? They, they have this multiple customers, and at the same time, they need to prov uh, provide the uh, SLAs and, and things like that to a customer. Uh, so those are... Um, so you're customers. avoiding storage silos. Uh, right, so... Again, because we can separate very well the workloads, in the same cloud we can have uh, SSD drives, uh, SATA drives, and we can have uh, high-performance block storage, and we can have uh, NAS uh, with high capacity, and they will not interfere with each other. That, that, that's different than traditional storage boxes that is kind of uniform, and it, it's hard to get two different workloads on the same box. In our case, it is a cloud system, and every workload is completely isolated, and, and the customer can say, well, I want to provide a high-performance story for a database, go to the console. It's really software-defined story. I, I don't like to use too much this <laughs> acronym because everybody's using, but uh, we, the customer can go to a console, define block storage for, for database at high performance, and then go to a console and say, I want uh, storage for backup or for BDI, and every story has different either interfaces or different price per gigabyte and, and things like that. So, and so you're in the Equinix data centers, which is in the cloud data centers. So why, is, you know, obviously Amazon has its own storage and selling mm -hmm. a lot of that as well. What differentiates your storage then from Amazon yeah. storage? That you um, see so um, uh, Amazon has different storage offerings and, and most of them are uh, basically the customer can decide which capacity they need, uh, and the customer doesn't have uh, more visibility than that. Uh, in our case, uh, what we provision to Amazon customers is, is a full storage array with dedicated drives, 
they can control the full management. They can decide which type of rate levels, which type of replication, if they want to replicate between east to west or, or, or between on-premise to Amazon. Um, so th there are multiple capabilities that we provide that cannot be done in, in Amazon. Uh, for example, we, are, we have a really good enterprise NAS uh, capability uh, for Windows and Active Directory integration that is not present in Amazon. Uh, we can do very large volumes, like 100 terabytes. Uh, Amazon is limited on the number of uh, the, the size of one volume. Um, clustering that needs shared storage. Uh, uh, encryption, where the customer has the key of, of the encryption. Storage that is replicated between East Coast and West Coast. There is, there is a lot of uh, the classical enterprise uh, capabilities that uh, we provide and uh, Amazon doesn't provide to them. So maybe talk a little bit more about sort of what you're seeing with, with Amazon and, and Azure. And particularly I'm interested in the context of what you think about you know, the future of VMware, right? Yeah. I mean, they got vCloud Air and they, they push that, but it's you know, tiny compared mm -hmm. to what you're seeing with Amazon and, and, and Azure. I wonder if you could talk about the progression there and what that yeah. all means to your business, and then I'm interested in what your thoughts are about the future yeah. of VMware. So when, when we started back in 2011, uh, we saw that most of the Amazon customers were internet companies like uh, Pinterest and Roku and these type of companies, and over the time we see more and more enterprises uh, doing things in Amazon and from all the sectors, retail, and manufacturing. Asdaq, and Shell oil, I mean, uh, yeah, they what, the, the killer everything. logo slide. Yeah. Don't they? So they, they, they have been doing tremendous yeah. job uh, oh, yeah. in the cloud. I think Azure as well, yeah. uh, it started a little bit later, but uh, they are catching up as well. Um, and for us, it's, it's very good because it, it, there aren't many places today that you can sell enterprise storage without competing with uh, EMC. <laughs> yeah. That is a good good place to be. Uh, I always say that I prefer to compete with Amazon storage than <laughs> EMC and Meta in the storage business. Yeah. So what do you think about the future of VMware? Um, you know, you've been in this industry a while, you've seen the ascendancy of, of VMware, and now they're at a crossroads, you know, they're fighting a multiple front, you know, about multiple battles on many mm -hmm. fronts. With yeah. Cloud, they got OpenStack, which you know they've embraced. Yeah. You know they've got a lot of their ecosystem trying to figure out, okay, where do we put our bets? Right. IBM and HP betting heavily on on OpenStack. You've yeah. got now Docker coming in, the whole DevOps you know movement. Yeah. What uh, What are your thoughts on the future? I, of this I, I think in, in general, I, I, if I would be at VMware, I, I would be okay. <laughs> would be, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kill uh, me with that problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If I will be uh, the CEO, will be fine. <laughs> um, I, I mean, things are are progressing, but they are not changing. The people add things. I think that the VMware are very very strong in, in the enterprise. The enterprise uh, we see many enterprises that want to keep their workloads uh, on site, on premise, and these are mostly VMware. Uh, this is one of the offerings that we provide is uh, storage on-premise on but consume uh, as a service and, and most of them are uh, VMware uh, customers. Um, so I, I will say that the, the cloud is, is changing things but uh, it's more of uh, the addition uh, type of workloads and not so much uh, completely replacement. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's interesting, you hear the, the whole hy hyperscale uh, movement or hyper-converged yeah. movement came out of the hyperscale. You know, it's a hyperscale for the enterprise. You always hear about yeah. that, but it's interesting to note, as you said, you're the only company on the floor that's actually selling storage as a service. That, that's what the hyperscale guys do. They say yeah. everything's you know a service. Yeah. You know, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or Amazon or I, Azure. I, I feel so uh, so. when I go to the floor, I feel oh, oh I am a stupid or I am a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, well, I I wonder, right? if it's the only guy sometimes that makes you nervous, yeah. but you're not really the only guy. You're the only guy actually bringing it into the enterprise the way that everybody says they want it done. Yeah. Um, why do you think that that is? It's just, just is it, it, it too hard to do? Is it just too scary for um, those companies? So I think that to, to be as a service, there is a whole set of technologies that need to be de developed that not necessarily come with the traditional storage. I mean. Uh, as a service, it's not just a financial model, it's a, it's a way to manage the customer storage. Right. Uh, and you need to do remotely. I mean, uh, today to manage storage, you need to have uh, so support people 
everywhere, in every city, with their offices and things like that. We have a system where we don't travel to the customer. We have everything can be done remotely. And this has two big advantages to the customer. First of all, we don't need to have people in every city in the world to sell. And we don't need to pay for that. And actually, the customer get the benefit of that. Second, we can uh, solve a problem in minutes. We have a 24 by 7 knock with top uh, engineers, and they can do everything in the storage. Uh, we always, because it is a cloud, we have always more resources, so it's easy to replace. Uh, so we can provide uh, 5 to 15 minutes response time and fix the problem. Uh, we just had a couple of weeks ago a drive failure in Sydney, and our guy here in California got an email alert, went to the system, replaced the drive with another drive that is in the cloud, and after 15 minutes, the system was... So when I buy an on-prem solution from you, what, what am I actually, what do I have to bring into my, sh my shop? We, uh, the minimum system is the two storage nodes and switches and firewalls uh, that we ship, about 10 U. Um, and then uh, the, the customer need to rack it, the physical racking. Uh, and at some point, we take over via firewall to, of our, our environment, private our environment, we do the software installation and day-to-day -day operations. And, and if there's a hardware failure on site, you're saying you replace that? We will replace, a, yes. With, with, with a, a, a virtual we, piece No, we, we will replace immediately yeah. with, with another company because we have enough redundancy yeah. so with the cloud system. With something in the cloud. With and then whenever you get inside the, Inside the same yeah. data center. And, and, uh, and then once in a while, we will tell the customer, yeah. okay, you know, we can blink the drives from remote and yeah. we say, okay, Go ahead and uh, take these ones that are blinking. You make it out. kindergarten proof. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, actually, we had a, a case, a very rare case, a uh, few months ago in Amsterdam that um, the, we tried to blink the, the drive and the drive didn't blink. So it was dead that cannot blink anymore. <laughs> uh, so our guy was uh, very smart and said, OK, we'll blink all the other drives, the one that is not blinking. <laughs> so that, this kind of uh, thing. Uh, that's what you say, you staff, you staff that knock with really smart people. So. Yeah. <laughs> now, co yeah. company-wise, how many people are you now? We are uh, 43. 43? Yeah. A and where are you in funding? And uh, we, we had uh, already uh, two rounds, uh, about $20 million, and um, we, we will be looking to do a round C pretty soon as well. Excellent. Well, Nelson, congratulations on all the success and the, and the awesome idea that you, you have and okay. bringing it to execution. So really appreciate you coming to theCUBE. Very good. Thank you very much, you. David. And, and all right. Thank you. Okay, Great. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after. This is theCUBE. We're live from VMworld 2015. Be right back.